So we are in the thick of it right now, Sudzers. We have seen so many epic soaps for Project Soapway, like amazing soaps in the coconut oil free challenge. And they've been incredible across the board. And we're also getting winners from like across the globe, you know, and that's also very cool. And by across the globe, it's like, you know, two other places that are not the United States right now so far. But this is one of them, the two other places that are not the United States. And so I'm really excited to show you this soap because this lather is just everything in the world for me. And it's like living rent free in my brain forever. And also because this human has been and also because the human that is attached to the soap that has the epic lather has been such a delightful and refreshing and just just bright and amazing addition to the Sudzer family recently that I'm super excited to talk about her. I will tell you more about the soap maker, the soap, Project Soapway, all the things in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 15 of year three and Project Soapway challenge number five, I think. I might have been getting this wrong this entire week. But the challenge itself is a coconut oil-free soap with a big bubble. That was basically the only parameters that I set down for this challenge and didn't give any really criteria for how you make the soap. So it could have been a melt and pour base that you made from scratch, could have been a hot process, it could have been a cold process. Didn't care about the design, all I cared about was the bubble at the end. And the bubble at the end of this winter is so, so good. I'm just absolutely floored by how amazing this lather was. This soap maker seriously knows her stuff and I am super impressed and I can't wait to show it to you. But first I need to introduce this soap maker. This is from Bubble and More. Now, she does not actually sell her soap. She is a soap maker out of Vancouver, which I'm going to take to mean Vancouver, Canada because it sounds way cooler than Vancouver, Washington. Like no hate on the Washingtonians. And also calling it Vancouver, Canada, it means that we have a Project Soapway winner from Canada. So that's also cool. But also, also, if you're from Vancouver, Washington, like why haven't we hung out yet? Cause that's only like an hour and a half away from me. Anyway, Bubble and More. Again, she does not actually sell soap, but she does have soap making classes in Vancouver. And so all of her, you know, socials and information will be here for sure. If you would like to book a class and you are in the area of Vancouver, BC, in Canada, not Washington. But yeah, she has very cool process. And not only does she have a cool process and a really cool thing where she's teaching soap classes, because obviously, as you know, I love the teaching moments. She also edited this video. So she sent me a fully edited video that I didn't really need to do much to. And so I love that. That was actually really enjoyable. While I really enjoy looking at all of the footage that people send me, that the winners of Project Soapway send me and listening to their chit chat hearing them talk to me or whatever it's not always necessary and this was also if i'm being honest kind of refreshing to see because since i decided to turn this project soapway challenge into insanity mode and select five winners instead of just the typical three that meant a whole lot more edits for me so when i saw this that it was a fully edited video i was like that is delightful thank you Anyway, let's get to the video because I still get to talk about it and it feels like I'm going to be watching it essentially for the first time with you guys because I didn't have to do the edits, figure out where to cut. So let's go there and we can talk about all things bubble and more and ooh and ah over her really, really epic lather. Okay, so we are coming hot with this information right off the bat. 
we have a 50-50 blend of frozen milk and distilled water and 36 grams of white sugar diluted in the water. Okay, that's great. Now, I know I've said before, like I really haven't watched this footage. We're all going to be experiencing this together. And that's all usually true-ish, right? Because I've seen enough of it during the edits that I have a basic idea of what's coming next. But with this, I really don't because she did all the edits for me. So that was amazing. And so we are actually watching all of this 100%, you know, for the first time, both of us, all of us. And it's amazing. I really love how she did her edits with all of this and included all of her steps piece by piece. It's very fun. And yeah, the liquids are going to change to yellow. Now that's going to be because of the milk that's in the solution, right? You can definitely have some scorching going on. But usually that colored lye solution does not yield an off-colored bar. And putting in the citric acid here, 36 grams of citric acid into the equation. Now citric acid is a great idea for a soap that you want to have extra bubbles in, right? As citric acid in soap, obviously it does help out with soap scum and whatnot, but it does so by actually, you know, binding to the metal ions. And so this would mean that it would actually be a very, very bubbly soap. All types of water, including hard water, which is usually the part where handcrafted soaps, you know, tend to have a, a pretty bad bubble. And so we're adding sodium lactate to the lye solution. Okay, that's the perfect place to be adding sodium lactate. That makes all the sense in the world. You can also add it to the batter if you want. Since sodium lactate tends to add a thickening property to the finished soap bars, it can also thicken batter. So if you have a more complicated design, putting it in right before you pour might be a good idea. Now, back to her recipe, which she just zoom zoomed through in all of this. So much information. Isn't this just the coolest thing? I'm seriously blown away. Fully edited video. It's amazing. So looks like we have avocado oil in at 20%, babasu in at 20%, castor at 5%, hazelnut at 15%, mango at 15%, palm oil at 16%, stearic acid at 2%, and shea butter at 7%. Yes, I did go back so I could get that information. Now, I like the recipe... It's going to be really good because you have the babasu and the castor in and as well as the mango, which is going to contribute to the lather. Palm does as well to that. And then you have the hardening properties with the stearic as well as the palm and the babasu. The hazelnut's an interesting addition because if you are building a coconut oil soap, right, because somebody has an allergy, if somebody is allergic to coconut oil, there might be a comorbidity. That's not really the right word but there might be a better chance that they're also allergic to other things like nuts. And so the hazelnut, I would say not completely necessary. Lavender martini. Ooh, that sounds like a lovely fragrance. But yeah, if you are concerned about potential nut allergies, you can sub out hazelnut for a rice bran or a, a hemp or an apricot. And I think you would get the same results really. So I like the recipe for sure. I think these are really interesting additions to all of this. And I am actually paying attention to the recipe pretty significantly because her lather test just across the board was the coolest lather that I have seen probably in life. And there were a lot of really amazing lather tests, pictures that came through for this particular challenge. But with hers, like I said, it lives in my mind rent free. It's amazing. Also amazing is she's doing a purple layer with this. I love this. Cool. Let's go check out this pour and talk more about her recipe and, you know, her as a soap maker. Okay. Now, as I said, you know, earlier, Patricia is the owner and, you know, soapy visionary behind Bubble and More, and she doesn't actually sell her soaps. What she does do, however, is she teaches soap classes which I find to be so, so cool because I love my soap teaching classes. Those have always been my most favorite classes to do. In person, you got a bunch of people in front of you and you get to explain all the chemistry things and all the soapy things and watch their eyes kind of glaze over for the most part with the chemistry things. But as they actually get into the process and they're making their soap, it's so much fun. They light up. They love it. So I love that she does this. I love that she has this brain that allows her 
to understand the soap making process and then, you know, is using that information and that knowledge base to help out other soap makers or potential soap makers or even just people who are just out on a date night and want to do something fun and they're tired of just going to dinner, you know? I actually get a lot of those clients too. Yeah, and the very lovely note that she sent through with all of her information and this fully edited video, which was on YouTube for a hot minute, but then I went to go see if like she actually had a channel and I don't think she does. She had removed it by the time that I, you know, came to do this. But it says in here that for her, soap making is a playful and joyful opportunity to share in the creativity involved in experimenting with colors, shapes, and ingredients. She calls it a shared artistic endeavor as well. And... I think that's such a beautiful way of approaching soap making, whether you're doing it as a busy business or as a hobby. Either way, it is artistic and it is something that really is a lot more fun when you get to collaborate with others, for sure. Now, in addition to the classes that she teaches one on or in person in Vancouver, she also does one on one online classes. So if you're interested in that and getting any information from her, definitely check out her calendar. Lee, how do you pronounce that? Kalendi, Kalendi, like, you know, you, you understand, you've seen it before, the Kalendi, I mean, I've had the, the thing up, but you've experienced the Kalendi thing before, right? It's a calendar that you can book time on. Yeah, if you're interested in that, you should definitely check out that link and you can also schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, now on to the part that I am super duper excited about, and that would be the cut and the lather test, because again, her lather picture was epic. So I cannot wait to experience this. I love the shininess of the top here. It's beautiful. No soda ash going on. Also, her piping skills, weren't they amazing? Well done, Patricia. Speaking of Patricia, she, to my knowledge, is not actually on the Discord. I had the soap mods do a double check after I had checked, and I didn't find her there. She has access to it, of course. She's been given the link. But I don't think she ever actually went on and did the thing. And so if you want to, you know, give her all the accolades and whatever, you're going to need to give her an, send her an email, which I'll put in the description below. Or, you know, just hit her up with the Calendy thing. Because, you know, obviously also comment here because she watches the videos. But she's not part of the Discord member Sudzers. She just has the membership and, you know, does the thing by email. Which is shockingly a lot of people right now. And... I find that to be very cool and you know some people like to be part of the community on a daily basis and others just kind of don't have the headspace and you see all of that kind of in spades when we are talking with each other and every once in a while we just see people gone for a while they were just working on their mental health they had to snooze the discord in order to get other stuff done and i get that because i have to do that from time to time too like i was just notified a couple days ago in Aubrey's video that I had forgotten to announce winners for Project Subway number six and seven. And so that's wild. But also we can't find any of the submissions for Project Subway number six. So I don't know. Maybe nobody submitted anything for the lotion challenge. I have no idea. But with uh, the Discord, sometimes you just need a break from it or don't really want to engage. And that's completely fine. But those soaps are so shiny and beautiful. I can't imagine that she wouldn't have sea popped them because they are absolutely perfect. They're very, very stunning. That purple came out so lovely. I'm a sucker for purple, for sure. Oh, we got a camera bump. That's okay. I'm not going to bother editing any of this out. I'm so proud of all of her hard work with all of the obvious, the soap making and the recipe building. But the editing of a video down to this... Obviously, that is not an expectation when, you know, anybody does the Project Soapway. But as I said, it was kind of nice to see for this one because I was a bonehead and selected five winners. And so that meant more edits. And so for this one, I didn't really need to do any of that. And now we're going to test the soap right after the cutting. Okay, and I like it. Why not? I, I, I love testing the lather right after the cut. That's what I do for all of my soaps, really. Oh, it's an instant nice bubble. That's so nice. Very little work had to go into that. That is absolutely stunning. This is an incredible recipe. And look at that. The more you lather, the foamier it gets. That is wonderful. 10 out of 10. And then you got the creaminess going on, which is to be expected of a brand new soap that still needs to lose some water weight for sure. But even with that, just, yeah, those big, beautiful bubbles for sure with this lather. I'm just so impressed. And the most impressive part is actually coming up because of her end finished product. 
I think she said that she did her final picture like nine or 10 days after she had cut the bar. And so that right there, brand new, fresh soap, you know, freshly poured soap, already giving an amazing lather, which is just all of the alls. A sign of an amazing big bubble, you know, blend just in general, just if you're getting that kind of lather out of it. But also with all of this, if you look at her recipe, that big bubble is not going to be drying either, right? She has her mango butter in there, which can be considered like a dry oil or butter rather. But with the amounts of the shea and the castor, as well as the hemp or the hazelnut, this is actually going to be a very moisturizing bar. I just plugged this into soap calc and it looks great. Like her numbers are all really good. And I love that she just keeps playing with those bubbles. It's just like with Chrissy with Soapy, she continued playing with the bubbles as well. It's just such a nice feeling, right? When you have such a fun lather, I get it. I look right there. She said, I don't want to stop playing with the bubbles. I would not want to stop playing with those bubbles either. I understand. There are some soaps that I get from, oh, look, she's creating a, an actual bubble too. Oh, oh, look at that. That's amazing. You guys like are same braining it, I think, with some of this. It's so amazing. But my God, that lather. Yeah, I have had soaps from Sudzers that I just, I stay in the shower longer and I wash again because they're just so delightful. And I, I, I love that she was experiencing that too. But yeah, that was her, her final picture. Nine days later, that's her lather. That is freaking amazing. Come on, tell me that's not the most epic lather you've ever seen. I am so in love with that and just gobsmacked. Like that is just a beautiful lather. And this is yet again, just kind of proof that you can get a really amazing bubble out of a soap that does not contain coconut oil. A lot of it has to do with the way that you're preparing your lye solutions and the extra additives that you put in to either your lye solution or your batter, your oils. But with this one, completely gorgeous. And it's something that I want to be a part of. As I said, that picture of the lather lives rent-free in my brain because that is just so epic. And so it's pretty obvious as to why she got on this list of the Project Soapway coconut oil free with a big bubble challenge winners. A lot of words. Now, Bubble and More did send a very nice note along with all of her footage that was just so amazing. And as I said, she's been such a welcome addition to the Sudzer family. Her participation has been just great. She's just such a lovely human. And I really do feel like she's, you know, a friend. And it's very cool to have her represented and her soapy skills represented. So go show her all the love. Tell her how good of a job she did down here. If you're in the Vancouver area, consider booking a class because... She definitely knows her stuff. So thank you so much for participating in the challenge. I appreciate you. I appreciate that you are a Sudzer. I appreciate that you have joined our community. Thank you. For the Sudzers that exist and didn't participate in the challenge, that's okay. I appreciate you too. You're awesome. For the Sudzers that won the challenges, I appreciate you too. You're awesome. For the people who are not Sudzers, I appreciate that you exist as a human or whatever, but I don't like you as much as the Sudzers. So there's that. Now we've had a little bit of scheduling issues because of the different time zones and the different Sudzers or whatnot. So I'm not exactly sure where this video will end up falling in the winners, but we'll have either one or two Sudzers left to go in the celebrating of the winners of this Project Soapway. So definitely subscribe and you'll get your notifications for when that happens so you can come back for those premieres and celebrate them because that's awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for existing. Again, obvious, huge thank you to the Sudzers for being a part of the Sudzer community and, you know, being a part of my life and being my friends. Thank you. I am out of here. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Project Soapway. Soapy fun. Bye.